Hello everybody, welcome to my quarter-final match between the Death Roller Dwarves and Chishurgan's uh, Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> Watching on the toilet at work. Good luck, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Holder Keep. Wonderful Perfect. timing. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> so we've got six stand firm guys now. I've got a couple more stand firm after the last game. Loads of stand firm, some mighty blow, and a death roller. Um, he has got um, a strength five bludgeable. He's got a couple of armor injuries. Um, he's got a, some armor seven, of course, being chaffs. He has got three claws, uh, but one doesn't have mighty blow. And one's got claw palm, but it's not that rowdy actually. You know, he's only got the claw mighty, the claw palm, the mighty, and the claw. So, it, and he's got a couple of dirty players, but it's not that rowdy a team. So, there's going to be a lot of dice involved. Twenty-eight seven five versus whatever the hell my record is. Twenty-five four three. Got boomer and um, scum boomer with a thirty k. That's that's totally acceptable. And in the booth we've got Skurometso right now, who will be joined by Purple Chest and. K Fog, I'm going to uh, try hard and not listen to them at all or look at chat at all. So goodbye, see you later. Uh, thank you, Skuro. Tschüss. Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Skuro Mezzo oh, here, oh, Gorilla Mezzo, as I'm better known. Uh, calling the shots today. PTK and PC are on their way as all star, a commentary crew, as you're going to find for an all star game such as this quarterfinal CCL action. It's Jimmy Fantastic versus the Surgeon. Chorus versus Dwarfs. You don't like being the Dwarves in that situation, but as Jimmy pointed out, these shorts, you know, maybe not the best, uh, the best uh, shorts they could be for killing off a bunch of dwarves. So we'll see what happens. Jim really hoping to go on the offense here, I think, and uh, take over this game early. And uh, looks like he has won the toss. He does opt to receive. So the dwarves are going out, and they're going out hard with that death roller. And here we go. Now I got to get into the game myself. Uh, he needs two dices, Moradam, and those two dices need to be successful two dices. More important than just uh, rolling some pows, though. He's got to break armor a bit. You know, he'd love to see that uh, that that death roller. Um, love to see that death roller take out a few guys before he's gone. No bribe to keep it in. Uh, so this is uh, this is it for the death roller here. Yeah, one hell of a bull on the pitch. Absolutely. Look at this guy. Fling the bull centaur. Strength five. Lodge and break tackle. And could conceivably get himself another level if this team continued on. Uh, if, <laughs> if he went on a run to the finals, this could be a, uh, you know, he could get one more skill in there. <laughs> purple chest dulcet tones you're gonna have to wait a little bit on purple chest he's doing um family stuff as he said but he'll be around no idea where ptk is but i'm sure he'll be around when he can we've got some perfect blood bowl weather for this one chorv's going a uh standard rule of five here interesting though he is uh going to uh, expose the strength. Oh, wait, maybe he's changing his mind here now. Not going rule of fives. A little bit variant here. Gonna say, Jim, if, he, if Jim was feeling really froggy, he could just death roller palm that, uh, <laughs> that 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 god bull we were just talking about i don't know that might put him a bit out of position though we'll see what he wants to do here yeah or he could go for a foul he could try and set up a foul with it afterwards uh, i think to to do it with the foul though shifty he'd have to basically put his whole team over there which maybe Jim doesn't want to do. I think he's going to play it pretty conservatively. But a bull like that on, uh, you know, on a blitz is just devastating. Doesn't matter if he set up for it. He can blitz through. He could probably even dodge through <laughs> with the break tackle, and then you've just got to deal with it.
Him being a little indecisive here, maybe, or maybe just uh, playing on using his entire uh, his entire setup timer. Nope. Hey, PTK. Oh no! All right. Well, we'll see you when you get here. Yeah, it looks like Jim is not going to fuck around with that Strength 5 uh, Bull Centaur this turn. He's going to just try and dominate that line of scrimmage. And smart, smart to do, you know, if he can get a Chorf off the pitch on his offense. And if he can make it stick, he's going to be real happy. But uh, that's going to be uh, that's gonna be as good a, as good a start as he can hope for here. Oh, and folks, we might have a uh, guest appearance. Hop on in. Surprise guest appearance in the booth while we're waiting on PTK. Short kickoff. This could be a little scary for Jim. Oh, and there's the blitz. Short kick blitz. That's not what you want to see. Oh, also, good afternoon uh, to our new surprise guest, filling some time while we're waiting on PTK to join us. Uh, good afternoon, Skuro. Good afternoon, everybody. Super hyped for this match. Yeah, absolutely. This is not how Jim wanted to start it, though. Rick Reckless in the booth. How you doing? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm awesome. Thanks, man. Um, got, a, got a guy in today doing the kitchen. So uh, plenty of time to, uh, to watch some Blood Bowl, baby. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now, wouldn't it be a Fuck thing if that ball scattered you exactly in front of that stand? First? Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. That's not where you want it. Hey, great Toto Fries, Milo Mindbang. Great to see you guys. Claw not popping right off the first hit there on the Blitz. He's got to be happy about that. Is he just going to... Oh, God, I thought he was going to break tackle right in there and just try and catch it right off the rip. Well, this could really backfire for Surgeon if this ball scatters through I'm gonna for a, uh, everyone who plays North uh, in real life a, and just beat them uh, to within an inch back. of their fucking life. Surgeon, uh, very, very deliberate here. Going to try and flood that line. I think he does have to worry about the rest of the line of scrimmage. Again, all these things can backfire. That ball goes into a safe spot for Jim to more easily contain. He's going to get a hell of a lot of hits uh, in return here. Yep, and we are seeing a lot of basin going on right now. Because we're all about the base, about the base, oh, no dear. trouble. <laughs> Welcome back, Purple Chest. Hope the family stuff went well. And here you go. There's that touchback. That could be a, a lifeline here for Jim. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to be really, really pleased about that. I'm in the client. I can see what's happening. And it's, uh, it yeah. did look briefly like a hairy situation, but um, putting that ball where he wants it is obviously going to be a big, big help to him there. Yeah, and it's just now it's going to be about leveraging all his guard and trying to get as many hits as he can. And, and you know, just like we kind of joked about at the start of this game. <laughs> How good can his 2Ds be? Um, he, you know, he... He could, uh, he could do some serious damage to this dwarf team right now. Here goes one claw. Puts him on his ass. Yep. 
I think he's not going to be unhappy with the, the bulls over the other side from the ball and quite a few of those uh, Chaos Dwarf blockers stuck on the roller. Absolutely. I mean, that was always going to be the risk here, basing up on that heavy on that right side and hoping for the bounce to go the way you wanted it to. Probably more odds that it stays in than goes out, so maybe Jim got a little lucky there. You can't really talk about luck when you just got short kick blitzed on. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's not what anyone wants to see happening on their first turn. But it has Certainly worked out not. okay for Jimmy right now. He's uh, he's in a nice, solid position. The ball is safe. He's got those Chaos Dwarf blockers walled away with the uh, the Death Roller really dominating that center of the pitch, exactly where you would want it to be. Uh, the great Toto Frias. Uh, my name is Skura Mezzo. I'm that, or Gorilla Mezzo, if you will. The guy in red there. In the purple, you've got purple chest. And PTK has not arrived yet. He's uh, running some errands, so we've got... A very quiet and reserved Rick Reckless filling in. Rick, you still there? Oh, he might not still be there. <laughs> well, primetime Kev does uh, does obviously like a big room. He's going to wait for the numbers before he makes be his appearance. Yeah, fair enough. He's more of a semifinal guy. Now, also mine. speaking of PTK, he is awaiting the winner of this match, Jimmy Fantastic or the Surgeon. Whoever wins it is getting... Uh, P uh, bleh. K Fog and what's he played this season? No idea. Yes, All great right. Toto Frias. I did cast it. Um, cause Chalice game. That that was me. And Martin scores easy. Raiding us 43 Raiders. Hope you guys had a good stream with Martin. Welcome aboard. We've got Jimmy Fantastic try harding his way through the quarterfinals of the CCL playoffs. The Roller Dwarves ride again. I'm the only one that's really interested in uh, in Core's last game, which I did cast with um, with Mayhem's uh, in the first chair. I was second chair on that. It was on his stream, I think. Uh, obviously, it's available through the AS site. Uh, also, I think uh, Core and me plan to do a little recap where he tells me how wrong all of my comments were. <laughs> uh, on his Thursday night stream, after we pull aside the pull apart the TSD builds, he wants to spend some time relooking at that game. Sounds uh, like a I wild one. As I predicted during there. those commentaries, is to tell me how wrong I was at any time I said he wasn't doing the ultimately best thing. Yeah, Purple Chest known for making a bit of sense here and there. I'm more known for my commentary in the JFW, the voice uh, of the professional wrestling so industry on Twitch. Uh, so I'm more I, I'm I'm more skilled at just talking nonsense for hours on end. I go with the sort of psychic approach in that if I say eight things, people will remember the one that was right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now the oh, there's some cool. dubs. Wow, re-rolls it though. I guess didn't want to get yeah. himself surfed. Yeah, no, in the first no, half, I, I don't think we're going to worry too there. much about uh, using those re-rolls yeah. up. Of course, you get them back for the second half, and that's where kick equity might become a thing. No, Demi, I didn't bother. <laughs> I didn't bother. I knew, I, 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 I knew it was just going to be a couple temper tantrums. I love me some flicky, but I didn't need to go back and watch a shitty game again. <laughs> Now, those bulls are, are a very dominant pieces. Of course, both of them break tackled up, so both of them very, very mobile. One of them strength five, one only uh, AV8. I didn't manage to knock it out, but it's certainly a, a vulnerability on this Chaos Dwarf team. Of course, always the truth with Chaos Dwarves. If you can get any of the Chaos Dwarf blockers off, if you can get any of the bulls off, that's a much better looking field position. Absolutely. And uh, welcome, welcome. First time saying hi, BB Seji. Welcome to the chat. Uh, so, so it was you. It was you, Surgeon Beat, in this round of the play or last round of the playoffs, huh? He he did, yeah, absolutely. I mean, All not right. just beat Fair me, enough, he thoroughly yeah. shamed and embarrassed me. Oh wow, I uh, did not catch that game, but uh, like we said, I mean, it's Chorfs. You know, this Chorf team. Jim was kind of commenting. He felt it was a little bit underpowered by Chorf standards at this stage, but it's still yeah. fucking Chorfs at the end of the day. <laughs> Absolutely. I didn't manage to knock. I knocked one hobgoblin off the pitch in the entire game, and that was done with the wizard. Yep. And if you're not making any removals against a team that's really strong on defense, really got some offensive options, got mobility, then you're going to struggle. Yeah. 
And now the I one thing, uh, you know, with that touchback working out to kind of keep the ball safe after the uh, scary blitz, Jim could get worked into a situation here where he's basically got to advance the ball with two guys to help. And there's two, you know, there's two, you know, there's two bulls there that can catch up better than anyone else on this team. Uh, you know, so if he can't win some fights on the LOS here and get some of his team free to help out on that ball, he might be in a situation where he's forced to score a little bit quick. Absolutely. The Bulls, of course, can get free any time they choose. Uh, the Death Roller does have that ability too, but lacks the pace to really keep it up and help at times. Uh, and and that runner, I mean, it, it's got the lovely movement up, but it's it's not that great a potato option at strength three. Any bull that hits it can hit it for two die. And the, uh, the strength five, of course, even with an assist on the runner's side, can still get two dice. So that's got to be a worry for Jim. Right, and a hop well, robin uh... goes very, very early to get down to ten for the Chaos Dwarves. He's not going to apothecary that. It's uh, it's a rookie hobgob. Now bench could come into play here. The key hobgoblin ball handler hasn't been put on for this drive. Being saved, of <laughs> get course, off my uh, fucking in case it gets tripped it. away. <laughs> but that, that, that leaves him only one other hobgoblin replacement. Dwarves a little bit of a longer bench. Uh, there's two nice dwarves sat there, and of course Boomer, great as line fodder. But also, if you really need to mess a drive up, you can keep him safe and lob those bombs in and hope that gets you somewhere. Yeah, there was a lot of consternation about Boomer by Jim early on. He kind of didn't want to take him at first. I uh, was thinking, but he, you know, he had 30k in inducement money, so he figured he had to put money into either Boomer or a Babe, opting for Boomer, which I, I think is the right call. I think I generally rather have bodies, especially as dwarves. John, Jim, yeah. Jim made the point. You know, you're more likely to get removed than uh, than KO'd. So, yeah, 100. percent The key thing, obviously, is with the death roller going out at the end of this drive. Um, it's whether you can keep Boomer for the second half, or do you have to put him on for that short turn? If you get your, you know, your eight-turn touchdown and they've only got one turn back, then I don't even hate Boomer going on for that short turn because obviously three claws with three dwarves to hit. It's much nicer if Boomer gets taken out than something you care about. Yeah. Now, as you predicted, that that runner is advancing really early as it's got the space. May as well seize those those spaces. But with the rest of the dwarves yeah, he... not able to come, that might leave him a little bit uh, out on his own. Yeah, he's got one more long beard here that 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 uh, guard mighty blows stand firm on the left yeah. of the line of scrimmage. He can get downfield too. So you know that's almost a full to. cage. The other option is getting around to the the back side of those dwarves, the one he's hitting and staying in there, yep. just trying to keep those dwarves honest, stop them yep. getting out of that scrum area as well. But, but it's yeah, all going to come the down to the move onwards. Here. I think that's probably right. There is enough yeah. around there to try and tie up those dwarves. And you can't rely on tying the bulls up. They are so mobile. Oh, no, uh, he is. Yeah. In. Yeah. Wow. He's he going to really just and step him up in, in there. And just tighten that pack up. But now he's got another, he's got another free dwarf. Yeah, he's got another one that too. can come free instead. I, I think yep. that one probably should come to the ball. That ball area is just looking a little thin if the bulls choose to come. Uh, Juhanian, if you missed it earlier, there was a, a short kick. Uh, and a blitz. Uh, you can see where the bulls currently are. The ball was right in their vicinity, but it scattered through for a touchback, gave Jim a little bit of uh, oxygen to uh, escape. Yeah, I don't think Sergiant's going to hate the, the position he finds himself in. He's um, The bulls, as I said, can get away if they choose to. Uh, you can just try and win that fight, chip a couple of dwarves, knowing that the death roll is going and Boomer has limited shelf life. Uh, yep. And if the claws start to do some work, obviously that's when the Chaos Dwarves start to look into a much better position. Yeah, but see, here here we go. In theory, the Surgeon can get both bulls, a chorf, you know, a cloth chorf, and that, uh, and that wrestle DP down into a uh, defensive position again, not for next turn, but the turn after that, whereas yeah. Jim won't have much of a response. So this is going to become a bit of a, a half-team fight um, back in uh, Surgeon's, uh, Surgeon's uh, area there. Absolutely, and even with uh, with Surgeon or Surgeon being um, you know, 
a hobgoblin down, if you can exert what you do have in the right areas, you can still count as if your number's up, even when your number's down. And that's a that's a big chip there. Only a guard piece, but yep. probably too early and too weak a piece to see the apothecary go in. And sure enough, Jimmy just rides that casualty. Yeah, you knew that was coming eventually. If any if any dwarf on the pitch right now was going to take it, other than Boomer, that was going to oh, Boomer's not on the pitch. Uh, that was going to be the one to do it. But still, you don't like seeing it now. Things could get a little bit tight here for Jim. Happy about that. He's going to force the dodge here for the bull to get back. Yep. Just a just a two plus though. Yeah, I mean, break tackle is getting nerfed. Uh, I couldn't really defend why, but at the moment, Bulls are incredibly mobile, as long as they've taken break tackle. Interesting, Interesting basing there on the blitz. Yeah. Here. I mean, I think, that's, I think that's to prevent either that blitzer having a, an attack on that claw piece and stabilizing slightly backwards of where Jim is right now with the yeah. ball. Yeah. I mean, a strength five bull doesn't feel under a lot of threat. From something <laughs> that like that is true. But if Jim just needs players free, he can he can still where he is. He can just dodge him out on a three plus there. Uh, but Jim Jim probably do, can't push forward anymore. So he might he might have to think about going back and trying to consolidate in the middle. But that middle's where all the chorfs are just hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a swap back into the central area, it it just puts him into more trouble, doesn't it? That's the thing. As you said, the early score might have to happen here, and it's it's not ideal because it will see the death roller disappear. Yeah. It's That's only one go for it to score now. It does right guarantee you're one nil up, but it's it's a lot of turns to give the Chaos Dwarves. And without that death roller centralizing the central area, and with one dwarf chipped by the claw already, you've got to worry that that means doom for Jimmy if that's the route he goes for. Yeah. This Chaos Dwarf's not quite as rowdy as you would love to be at this point in the tournament. But they do have a uh, claw pommer, a claw mighty blow, and then a, a naked claw. So that's three pieces that can certainly do some damage to the dwarves. Um, though I found each of the bulls got themselves a, a casualty, which without mighty blow I thought was a little rude. <laughs> that's uh, always the worst it... when you're playing when you're playing a kill team and then the non-kill pieces are the ones getting the kills. Absolutely, but uh, but you know if you've got strength five and strength four doing enough hitting, you don't necessarily need mighty blow. You eventually you're going to get some nice rolls on up on them. I think Jim was testing the waters a little bit in the middle here, seeing if he could get a chorf down uh, and maybe consider yep. cutting back. But I, I think at this point, his, his only option... Oh, God, all the pushes. Yeah, if the jump-up piece had worked, but it, it didn't fire, then we might have even seen the death yeah. roller try and get a bit out of that scrum and tiny bit more mobile. As it is, it's tying up a yep. lot of chorfs, but it's there's a lot of dwarves in there helping it do that. Yeah. And that blitzing piece last time that I said yeah, might head into the pack to secure here. the area now looks a little out of position. Yeah, and with that well, not working, doesn't, doesn't have to spend. Yeah, it doesn't Jimmy have to spend a reroll. That's not a dominant position for Jim to be in, but he gets the score regardless. Has all his rerolls still? Uh, did he use one reroll earlier? Yes, he used one reroll yep. earlier. Uh, but. Yeah, they've each no, used one of them. On defense. Here, here we go. So now, of course, Boomer's going to take the line of scrimmage and, and hope that if a kill comes, it's on him. But that is uh, that is leaving us already at only 11 fit dwarves for the next drive. Because Boomer yeah. will definitely go one way or the other. Jimmy now, I think, has got to consider if anything else gets any kind of injury, that that apothecary is probably going to have to come in. Yeah, I think so. No dwarf looking at this game would have thought, oh, I'll just score in three and it'll be fine. So although it's 1-0 to, to Jimmy, I think in terms of momentum, we've got to say that was a was a big momentum yeah. swing for the here, wasn't yeah. it? And that, I mean, that was, again, that was, you know, obviously you get blitz short kicked early on. You're never going to be having a good start against a good coach with a good team. But uh, that risk, you know, getting that ball completely safe on the emergency turn one, caused yeah. you know caused that chain of events that caused that score there wasn't wasn't much option other than if he had run back with it then he'd be on an eight turn slog but there's probably more likelihood 
Then he gets overwhelmed by the Bulls and loses the ball. But it's so. an eight-turn slog where already you're all out of position. The momentum in terms of the line of scrimmage was, was already heading in the Chorf's direction. So you've pulled, choosing to pull back over the halfway line with only four turns to go. And that does that means there's a good chance you don't get your scoring. Yeah, absolutely. At least yeah, this way, you yeah. can hope that something happens on a kickoff result. or I mean, he gets a blitz back or something that, again, just stalls that Chaos Dwarf momentum and allows him to end the half at one nil. Yeah, I this mean, is not a great know, position for the gym stuff. No, cer certainly not. But Jim, you know, Jim very good with his positioning in general on defense. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, he can make the dwarves ha or the, excuse me, the chorfs have to roll some dice to score. <clears throat> and uh, you know, even if he doesn't get that, you know, that blitz in return or anything miracle like that, he'd love a perfect D right now. I think. <laughs> Absolutely, the, the huge thing here is to avoid a touchback. I mean, if it got into yeah. the hands of say the strength five bull, that would be very, very big. Not the worst of kicks for him, but kickoff return kind of negates it. Yep. And that uh, and now overly he's got agile. As many rerolls as he likes, basically. Yep. Jimmy, of course, here does have the fame. Um, so, particularly in the second half, and if we do start to look towards overtime, that could become a factor. Oh, now, Boomer being line fodder, he'd still like to see him hang around for a couple turns here. So. <laughs> you want him there to Going take right the hits, down. not necessarily to take the kill. Totally fine. And that's actually... Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> oh, just this thing. I going to say, if you didn't get that stun there, stand a boomer up. Eating, you know, eating three dwarf ca or dwarf tackle zones pretty nice. Yeah, the interesting thing about that claw pommer is, of course, it is move free. So it's not going anywhere very distant from where it is right now, having piled on. Next turn, it will stand Absolutely up. Absolutely agree. If there's something to hit, he might do a go for it and use that, but it's certainly not going. Yeah, totally agree with that. And also, yeah, I agree with you, Billy, on that one. Uh, I would have liked to see that Palmer hitting a real chorf because you know, you know Boomer's off the pitch anyway. Real dwarf. God, I can't keep him straight. Yeah, I would have I would have used the claw pom on one of the other two pieces on the line of scrimmage. Totally and I probably wouldn't have piled on uh, unless I already had an armor break. Well, I think Jim's just going to take some pot shots here. Try and stay in front of the chorfs. Yeah, the last Basically, thing just... he wants to do here is get drawn into a, you know, a, a stand firm claw wall. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his his absolute best hope at this point is keeping bodies between the chorfs and the end zone and making sure on turn eight when this score attempt happens, there's more than just a couple dice. And he's got the, he's got the stand firm to make it hard. Nothing here other than, yeah, exactly. Nothing other than stabilize his line because with it lacking, and if Jim's team does lack something other than a talented coach, um, it's a strength four piece to do some hitting without needing assists. And anywhere he put an assist there was going to put it at huge risk. Yep. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And yeah, so there's the only the only weak point on this line right now is the Blitzer HTK dead in the middle. But you know, Jim will Jim will take him trying to flood through the middle all day long. I think. Absolutely. That that's almost a deliberate sacrifice piece, isn't it? Saying, "Come through me, please." because then I can fold in on you from both sides. Yeah. Ideally here, Jim really doesn't want to do that. What he wants is for the Chores to do what they're doing now, which is do some basing up of their own. Um, if they get a push here on a stand firm piece, that's going to be nice. That's going to give him two easy hits back. It's all on whether the... This one blitz comes up with those golden, golden pads. Now, there is the option here to put a second assistant on that dwarf and do the double go for it with the claw bomber. Yeah, I thought that's what was nope, happening it's there. just standing, putting some threat onto Boomer. Yeah, I yeah. thought it would happen. Um, he's got some re-rolls. And there's those pushes. He does burn the re-roll on it, and he gets rewarded for it. And, and he gets the, the KO, The mighty too. blow piece that went, of course, because... Yeah, that's what Claw's there to do. 
mock dwarf armor. And without armor, dwarves really don't have a great deal. Absolutely. People call them a bash team. I, first of all, think that's pejorative. Why do one team get to be a dodgy team, which is a nice phrase, and the other one a bash team, which is horrific, and, uh, an insult to them? I think dwarves are an armor team. They're a control team. They're a stability team. It's all about the AV9 and the thick skull trying to keep those dwarves standing. I feel standing like calling on someone tough position. I feel like calling someone dodgy is <laughs> might might be a little bit insulting. Or as uh, as my good friend Cor, who may be here at some point to help us out, would call it, dash versus bash, and there it's <laughs> definitely one is is seen as a good thing and the other as a more negative. Yeah, more damn knows what's up. If we were to say strength-based versus coward teams, I'm not sure <laughs> elf fanciers would think that was fair. And so there's that double layer screen. Is he just one D in here? He is. He gets the pow. <laughs> This yeah, would be as I said, classic. without a strength just... four, very, very hard to see how you attack this without putting yourself at risk in return. Yeah. So sometimes, yep. particularly with four re-rolls, a one die, you know, you can re-roll it for your two die if that's what it needs. <laughs> I was going to say, that would have and been just the most classic dwarf armor break of all time. The one D <laughs> bow. Yeah, dwarves don't hate a one D. I mean, lots of people say, oh, dwarves love one D. No, no one loves one D. Just dwarves right. don't fear it if they have to do it because they're used to that. Lacking the, the strength same. a lot of other uh, armor-based rosters have. It's no real different than uh, an elf, you know, a wood elf. Yeah, no real different than a wood elf trying to dodge away. Absolutely. A nice defensive to shape for Jimmy here, but both Boomer and the other line of scrimmage dwarf are definitely in risk. All right, uh, Segi and Furion. Um, I don't know if you know the Expendabro command, but you are signing yourselves up to be a named uh, crappy piece in Battle Brothers. Jim will probably see that sometime later today or this week. And uh, this time we don't see the claw pom pom, despite the fact that it did get a natural armor break. A um, yep. little bit surprising. I think that was something I would rather have piled on, knowing I'd already got the stun at least. My replay froze. <laughs> I was like, I didn't now see we... any club on fire. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh this cutback might stretch the chorbs a little bit thinner than they need to be. What do you think of that, PC? Did I lose PC? Uh, Did I lose? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, okay, no, I'm there. still here. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. I think trying to go up through two stand firm pieces on the side, you are relying on breaking armor to do that. Yeah. Um, even if you knock them down, getting around them can be tricky. Whereas outmaneuvering dwarves, particularly with that stun on Boomer, it did look a little thin on the left. He's got some nice chorps there already. There's the stun means that on the right, he wasn't in a stronger position. I don't love the amount of basing up he's doing, and I'm not entirely sure why that bull advanced after the blitz that didn't knock a dwarf over, but... Yeah. Um, again, a strength five is so hard to take down. And with Boomer in a position, you might otherwise want to try and get a guard into... Perhaps he feels it's safe. And of course, the guard wall going in on the blitz piece does tighten it up, but it, he's basically tempting Jimmy into coming saying, come on then, let's have a fight. I mean, with the, with, 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 with the claw mighty that he's got, <laughs> I'd be okay with that fight generally. Yeah, it's, it's also quite an interesting factor of Jimmy's dwarfs that they're a little bit guard light. Yeah. Doesn't feel that way when you look at it, but yeah, yeah, you are right. I mean, it, not compared to you know an elf team or a badly sure, developed sure. Uh, strength-based roster, 
but for um, a min max dwarf team, yes. <laughs> yeah, and against something else dwarfy with the amount of guard they bring to the table. I mean, there are six Chaos Dwarf blockers each carrying guard here. Uh, and Jimmy right now only has five guards on the field. Of course, he has had one injured uh, and also one KO'd. So that's where some of the guards gone. But people mock me when I roll with sort of nine to ten guards. But... You know, this is why, is because dwarves do need that guard sometimes to get those hits in to dominate those positions. And you lose one or you lose two, and suddenly it just isn't quite enough. Oh, 1D Skull has the rerolls to, uh, to burn now. Absolutely. But, I mean, you really, really want to hit that bull if you possibly can. And, uh, and he and does. Gets him on nice the ground, doesn't get both. the armor break. Yeah. Of course, that was a non-mighty blow hit. But look at this! Both bulls might be on the ground. No, just the just the push. The AV9 survives the mighty blow, and the AV8 does not go down. What it has I done, like that ball was technically in a scoring position. It now isn't. So. That's probably. Yeah, not, not a reasonable there. one. <laughs> Certainly no. not a reasonable one, at least. No, but if you only tagged it with a single piece, then even the, the Wrestle Hobgob could have moved it and you yeah. could have tried the, yeah. the, the, the you know, one in four fail for the handoff and score. I feel like this Blitzer needs to come across the field a little bit. Because there's a, there's a pretty easy hole through here if he doesn't shore that up. HTK just moving maybe four squares to the right. Yep. I think Jim's looking at looking at his screen. I think Jim's looking at that right now. Yeah, the problem with that, of course, is it does leave the other flank a little more exposed. I mean, there are the two it, stand it, firms it, there, and you, you've got well, three stand firms. You, you've got to hope that they... Um, they do a job and tank some hits without being a push. Yeah, around. it does. But at this point, you, you know, with that three one turns that's, uh, right in front of HTK right now, if you got him, yeah, with yeah. three turns left to score, I kind of don't mind the Chorps cutting back one more time. I'd rather that than them caging no, up, no, no, you know, no. halfway through my uh, through my. Certainly, they wouldn't be able to make a lot of progress field. forwards. They can just, you know, set up. Oh, am I behind? Am I behind? You're a little bit behind me. Uh, okay, fair enough. My turn six just started. Shut up, Timmy. <laughs> I've just moved to turn six for the Chaos Dwarves right now. Oh, I, th I feel like I'm ahead of you then. <clears throat> Uh, stand firm doing its job. Or I think it's absolutely like contractually, contractually obliged to say stand firm. It's a skill. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know basically half of the half of the chorf team just bogged down right in the middle of the field there. Piling on, so not firing this time. Little without the pace on the. Yeah, I think we've got to the position in the drive where, where you really need those guards up on their feet, securing that line. I I didn't love that piling on. Yeah, I agree. And here we go. Uh, he is doing the cutback here. Good uh, good armor break for him there on that blitz. But this is gonna this is this score is now going to involve some dice. Of course, See it is a fast quick. hobgob, which uh, which does help. Yeah. You know, six counts as fast in a game where there's lots of dwarves on the pitch, and it does have some agility, so it can, you know, it can go through holes that perhaps otherwise you might think were not a place you'd want them to be. But Stanford's certainly doing a job 
there in terms of limiting forward momentum and tanking a couple of hits before it got stunned. And we're seeing the Bulls trying to seize those spaces, control that pitch area, give the ball somewhere to go next turn. All right, I'm going to go refill my coffee wheel real quick while... Uh, <laughs> well, this heads into the uh, the end of this turn and get into the exciting bit of this half. Um, Shifty Fly, it, it's a very good question. I mean, it, the, the ending of this half is incredibly key here. Um, as will be the KO recovery for that uh, that nice guard dwarf that's sleeping on the sideline. With Boomer definitely going off, um, if that one doesn't come back, we're going to see short dwarfs. And that's not a great position to ever be in. The bull fail's really, really helping. It means there's uh, one side of the pitch Jimmy can be a little less worried about. Of course, being strength four and, and still getting up and having six moves, it's it's still a concern where it goes next turn. But is it one he can afford to really worry about when really the momentum has switched to the other side of the pitch? And right on cue, my re my replay froze again. Jesus Christ. I think I'm a tiny bit ahead of the Twitch stream, but only a tiny bit. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't know why that has that is such a problem for me. I don't know why. Like, just replays just, like, randomly freeze up on me. Uh, Jolie, when there's 11 of them and only one elf left on the pitch, that's when I consider the numbers about fair. <laughs> yeah, Lemon, I think you might uh, I think you might be right on there. Maybe a little bit worse than that. Ce joueur préfère se battre entouré. Ce joueur est un véritable mur. Oh, well, he's got the re-rolls. Got to use the re-roll there, surely. Yeah, absolutely. Gets him over. Oh, goes in one more time with it. Had to be done. You have to lock those yeah. Chaos Dwarf blockers down. Yeah. I mean, what Jimmy's trying to do here is to control the space in front of where um, the Chaos Dwarves want to go. Keep the Chaos Dwarf beards back so that they're not coming with the ball and then hope he can work some kind of opening to attack the ball next turn or to create some kind of fail with the bulls trying to move too fast or the ball trying to move too fast and he gets and the uh, really stand nicely. firm yeah he gets the stand firm on the ball but it's only a two plus away uh but still still better than nothing absolutely any any little you know one percent two percent chance you can put it just adds up perhaps to to something maybe going wrong at some point in the other guy's turn. Absolutely. Scary moment here, though. It looks like this uh, Slayer is about to be hit. Yeah, there's a claw mighty blow with that Slayer's address. Yeah. Eats, the first, uh, eats the first block on him. Eats the second block on him. All right, it's going to be a two plus away. I don't think he wants to waste a, a blitz on him. That firm, this best fail. skill I'm in the right. world. <laughs> Jim, Jim uh, might right be coming block, around on it a little bit. Blow. All right, we're getting a two plus and into a sideline, a base sideline cage. Views in this stream but, uh, are not that, supported that, by that the Slayer's about to get hit. <laughs> well, only if the bull makes its two plus. Yeah, it does. 3D gets him three down. Die on, three die on the Slayer. Now Jimmy's got some hard calls to make here. How do you stop these bulls punching a hole that that Hobgoblin can run through? Yeah, unfortunately, his stand firm... Away. If you can even push that to two, but 
with the re-rolls in hand and the big strength five bull dominating that position. Hmm. There might be a route right onto the ball. I mean, uh, yeah, that hobgoblin, if it doesn't make its re-roll. No reason to not re-roll that. No he reason to. does make that GFA, yep. Yeah, that ties the Slayer up. Otherwise, because that uh, that Claw Mighty Blow Chorf really doesn't have some land firm, which is quite rare in this game, we could have seen some, you know, some ball basing. But now with both bulls in really dominant positions to make sure there's a route through, no easy way to put pressure on the ball. This is a very bleak situation for Jim. Yeah, absolutely. And that early score is looking more and more like it's going to be huge. Well, much like the uh, the horn of Gondor sounding, I believe we're being joined by PTK right now. PTK, welcome aboard. Scary situation for Jim and the dwarves. How you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering about when I logged in that that if Chorf had the ball that early in the own in Jim's drive, did he just go in? Really early? Jim, uh, had to, Jim had to score real early because of that. He had a short kick blitz that he recovered from, but it involved getting the ball safe by moving it downfield with not enough protection oh. to uh, stall it out. I mean, it was a touchback. He, I, mean, I suppose he had the option of taking the ball in hand and just dropping all the way back, trying to stabilize the line of scrimmage. But the I blitz, as well as meaning the ball was in real risk if it hadn't touched back, <laughs> also meant that his line of scrimmage position was just collapsing. The yeah, balls and the that's something were all over him. That'll be something that'll be interesting to hear from Jim's perspective after the game. I think I don't think there's a one right answer there, because as we kind of already talked about, bringing that ball back maybe increases the chance of an eight-turn score drastically, but uh, that's fraught with his own peril, and he might not have scored at all. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to think I'd have trusted the death roller to eventually dominate that line of scrimmage. And the fact Jump that two guys head. had to go with the ball and protecting it down the other flank, you know, just reduced your options in that area. But, oh, and another jump up fail for Jim. Yeah, it's not, not a big jump up fan. Yeah. A three plus is, is just not something I want to be relying on very often. But had it worked, oh, here of course, we go. Would have been huge. Miracle play here. Might as well try the loner reroll. Oh, doesn't get it. All right. Well, and the only thing it do takes it. down is another dwarf. Now, in some ways, that's not so bad. It does mean it's not going to take a claw hit in return. So if you're not going to chip a CDB, then getting your own dwarf safely on the ground is probably the next best result. I don't well, think, I don't we're think he's going to score, and I don't think we want to lose another dwarf. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's going to risk much more than this. Uh does have a he does have a GFI to score here. We all know exactly how that tripwire can treat you. <laughs> Already with Boomer going off the field, if the KO doesn't come back with short dwarves for the second half, I think I'd just be banging it in here. He's chaw. Yeah, he's, he's, he's gonna blitz. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna use a claw bomb somewhere, isn't he? Surely. Yeah. I wouldn't, but you're right. You're totally right. It's probably gonna be this uh, this blitzer in the center. I'd have thought. I Stanford primarily play on dead. So is a nice piece to take out. Absolutely, there it goes. Yeah. And of course, you have to pile on. Yeah, there's a lot of sense. And uh, to be fair, turn, if there's any time to pile on, it's turn eight, eight and sixteen of the drive. <laughs> so far, and that's why I'm not a big lover of piling on without claw. I wouldn't have piled on any of the ones he's piled on except that one so far. But Full yeah. credit for the bobble box here, playing it safe. Let's see. Yeah, oh. safety option in case of the tripwire, but no tripwire. All right. Well, Jim has a uh, lot of work cut out for him here. Would love to see an answer uh, from the kickoff gods here to try and make this game a little bit more square for him. But it's 1-1 going into the half, and the Chorfs are going to be receiving to start the second half. Scary situation yeah. for Jim. And he's facing a very similar situation to I did where... He's done lots of hitting, but he just hasn't had the removals. There's one pointless go of Hobgoblin that's uh, gone to the casualty box, but nothing else has got injured. And uh, and now we're short dwarfs. Yeah, it didn't get his situation KO back. And really needing a momentum. Uh, yeah, that, that KO is bad. That KO is really bad. Yep. Yeah, Jim that's opted huge. for Boomer over a Babe uh, at the start of this game, but it, it's kind of an even trade there. <laughs> babe... Uh, 
Oh, babe wouldn't have worked for him anyway. So, so Boomer was officially the right call there. And whilst it hasn't increased the uh, the quality of the ones on the line of scrimmage, because if the KO had come back, it would have been in the backfield. It's another mighty blow piece. It's another stand firm piece. It's another guard piece. And Jimmy could have really used it. Oh, I didn't see the uh, the GG uh, the GG equity being played. Uh, Jimmy's gone with a, this is game over, has he? As we all know, that's <laughs> oh, invoking Toto the Fry. final act of, the final <laughs> prayer to Nuffle. If I declare Great the game Toto over, Frius. surely Nuffle will mock it. The early GG is a very important skill to have in Blood Bowl. Got to hit it just right. Jim, uh, Jim uh, high up on the, uh, on the skill chart of the early GG. So uh, let's not write him off here yet as lame. I think uh, this is all part of the strategy. <laughs> I think if it wasn't a, a Chalice game, we'd see him conceding this and heading to Battle Brothers, but not really an option for him today. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, you never know. Kickoffs can change anything. <laughs> not really. No, it's mostly just a meme, Toto. There are some opponents you can play with their head. Uh, can change them with what you say in chat and how you pretend or are dealing with the game. Uh, mostly, of course, it's just meme fun. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, we'll we'll know when this game is over by what turn Jim starts talking to us again in commentary. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But this does reek of the classic Jorf, uh, Chorf situation where two out of these three uh, line of scrimmage hits are going to take Dwarves off the pitch. If that happens, I think we might see Jim straight into the commentary box. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> Never talk in chat, try. Never, ever, ever. Just put it on mute forever. Best thing you can do in Blood Bowl. <laughs> To be fair, I often put it on mute, and then I forget to put it back, <clears throat> and then I wonder why somebody I know hasn't said anything for the whole game. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do that rude. occasionally too, but... <laughs> no one wants to just celebrate your show, bro. <laughs> How's that fun? Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. There's an early chip from one of the claw. <laughs> one out of three. He's got a. Uh, I don't know, that's a badly hurt. It doesn't even matter. He's got, at this point, he's got a Apo, a KO. At this point, I think he's probably regretting not Apoing uh, the first piece that went out just for having that extra body, that extra guard on yeah. the pitch. Or a popping the KO in the first half. I'm a big fan of, in the chalice, the team's dead anyway. <laughs> So, <laughs> Second early. use your use your apothecary rowdy. Use it like you would in a NAF game. Uh, and just to preempt, if uh, if we all stop talking to you and the stream goes dark, we'll see Jim in three uh, three CCLs. <laughs> Maybe. If I stop talking, it's because I've just had a rather nice uh, tuna pasta bake delivered to me. If Skuro stops talking, it's because Civil War II has broken out in America and he's manning the barricades. I mean, uh, if he's Civil War hiding II... in the basement, come on, be real. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be I'll be fleeing into the woods with my dogs, just living 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 like a crazy person. So the difference. Well, they'll be yeah, empty because all the people in the woods, all the truly crazy people, will be out uh, storming the capital, won't they? Well, uh, I'm one of those north uh, northeastern coastal elites that you hear about, so we don't have to worry about much up here. We let uh, all the plebs do the dirty work for us. The bit that I'm still going to travel to when America breaks into eight parts. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be called uh, Southern Canada, Southeastern Canada. New Ontario, that's got a good ring to it instead of New England. I'd have thought New New England would be a way to go. Yeah, New New England. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy coming in with the elf wall here. 
And again, what he's trying to do is make the uh, the Chaos Dwarves engage, make them come to him for the war, and then hope to get some chips back when they overcommit. But it's a bleak plan. Very short of guard, as I said. He's very short of mighty blow. Hello, Artemis. And yeah, Mordem, you're fine. You've got Robocop protecting you in Detroit. Yeah. <sighs> We're seeing a yeah a three die hit from the uh, the strength nope. five pull. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and first for no first claw. Towards, yeah. For first claw. Here's that engagement you were talking about. <laughs> Well, that gives Jimmy some hope. There might be some hitting to be done in the middle here. Yeah, kill some chov. <laughs> he, he certainly has to try that. Um, we should is point that... out to chat that Core is not unbiased in this situation. He faces the winner of this matchup, which he's now entirely <laughs> certain is going to be the Chaos Dwarves. All he cares about is a few less Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. let, let's be honest, just kill Dwarves. I'm, I don't, I'm not racist. I can do both races. It's fine. <laughs> PTK, uh, in all seriousness, which uh, coaches aside, which of these two teams would you have rather faced? Uh, the Chalves. Yeah, that's the general consensus. A little bit underpowered by Chorf standards for this late in a, in a playoff run, I think. <clears throat> and it's, it's a higher team value for less, for less skills. Where the problem yeah. with Wolf is to pack so much firepower in, in not much team value. Um which I definitely haven't been abusing for several seasons to take light tight teams and use inducements and somehow luck my way through. Although I might uh, have done. <laughs> We're dwarves, so yeah, it's just the guard stand firm wall is just annoying like hell. The chauves has to stand firm, but it also means the chauve cannot backline fully with tackle if the, and have stand firm lines and stuff. It's yeah. just more choices. Although with six CDB and a uh, and a tackling bull, they do have seven, so they can at least get you know an easy five across that back line and make sure you're yeah. at least having to go through a tackle tackle zone. Yeah. Um, for your click elf, click end zone score elf, which everybody loves and no one wants dead. To be fair, I want it dead, but I'm still going to use it. Spoiler alert: <laughs> If you don't want to know how Core's game ended, then uh, close your ears now. We'll go na 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 na, or put some Britney Spears on. I think it's too late. <laughs> um, but Core did win his quarterfinal, but only three elves survived. Oh, unfortunately, it was his three best elves. It might have been four. I, I didn't exactly count. But certainly, it's it's uh, it's going to be it's going to be eleven, isn't it? Even with Jordan, yeah. it seems unlikely that until you use inducements, you're going to have more than eleven on the roster. But one of them is a really nice war dancer. All vanilla skills, but um, tackle, strip ball, dauntless, wrestle. So it goes where it wants, and it takes anybody down. And then what also a boring a game! Water. Didn't even get to play Blood Bowl. Uh, there and we nope. go. Turn eleven. Turn eleven. <laughs> Oh. Turn 11. Yeah, I think that's slightly yeah. earlier than we predicted. Uh, I don't know. I think I should have kicked, you know. Like, I don't know it's easy to say after he got a blitz, but it's just tricky, isn't it? Defending against the bulls, like defending the ball against the bulls, like especially after the blitz. Especially after the blitz. But even without the blitz, it's just hard to protect your ball against two bulls, isn't it? Like, Absolute nightmare. They're, they're ridiculous. And like I've only got the strength three carrier, so like e either one is devastating. Yeah. It's just, there was nothing I could do, I don't think, really. I mean, like, yeah, I could have that back hobgoblin, that Even chipping the Hobgoblin and going 11-10, it was really quickly back to 10-10. Uh, yeah. And just, you weren't able to get any momentum, you weren't able to get the removals that created that space or allowed you to, you know, monster those bulls. Yeah, and I was hoping for, like, some removals, in. you know, but it's stupid. I should have yeah. just kicked and then I would have had the, the roller for eight turns guaranteed. Might have done something. And then... Well... Classically, Jim, uh, before the game, we talked about your strategy. Said you had to roll two, di two dice blocks. 
<laughs> which you did, but you didn't listen to the winner three, the winner five's second part of that advice, which is have them be successful at anything. Yeah. Uh, really yeah, not that's, removing that's a, any. That's a key anything. failure here. Yeah. yeah. So you really, know, no one to blame but yourself. Yeah, I could have had the four pals, pals of but you chose kill. the non pals. That's... Yeah. I don't know. You know. <laughs> I know he says you're all about that's just it's being silly, isn't it? Um, but like realistically, maybe I should have appled instantly. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, at the time, I didn't hate it because it was your least good dwarf. Yeah, but you're just thing. not long enough on guard that you know missing that guard, and then when the KO failed, particularly, I think that put you in a really tough spot for the second half. Mm. Yeah, maybe I should have. Uh, maybe I should have reloaded. Really maybe I should have appled that guard. Hey. Oh. Never mind, yeah. <laughs> Getting the quarterfinal with Roller Dwarves is pretty good. Yeah, this is a team we didn't think like... would get 10 games in, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least it's not like, you know, one of your Battle Brother teams died or something you care about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I obviously I'd have liked to have, uh, I'd have liked to have done better, but. I think I should have kicked. I really do think I should have kicked. I was hoping to get lucky with some removals, but it's just harder on offense because they've got the balls, haven't they? So if I if I yeah. kick, then I don't need to care about the balls, and I can just tee off on him. I mean, if you kick, then yes, the balls are still going to be dominant, but you're less worried about them taking your ball carrier down. You could try and you know get hold of the hobgoblins, but also if you kick and they remove your line of scrimmage, then probably the game's over right there. Sure. Although, of course, the roller hopefully stabilizes that for you. Yeah, that's the thing. Isn't it? So, so, yeah. I don't the think roller I just much didn't do quite else, enough so. in this game. Mm. I'm not sure if that early move down the side, I mean, I know exactly why you did it. The space was there, and, and dwarves see space whenever they can. I'm a huge one for that, but. but I think if I, I hadn't, the then, you know, his balls are at the back. Point. Like, uh, where could I yeah. have fucking gone? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if I absolutely. run back, there's the danger that both balls are in my backfield, and now I'm completely fucked. If I go. No, up we said that, but the, if you tried to stabilise in the middle when he was dominating the scrum because of the blitz, that yeah. could have gone horribly wrong, too. Yeah, it was re I mean, it's too bad in the strength five break tackle is stupid. It's like, <laughs> like how you know, it's you can't, very strong. You can't take chances around that, really. Um, and it so. goes where it wants, and then it does what it wants when it gets there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, terrible, like. <laughs> My last game of the ball. My last game for today. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, that's the that's the the non memeable yes, Bezel. If you must know, I do absolutely sleep naked. Bezel. And yet, of course, you know, Chaos Dwarves do still have some ground to make, and only four more turns to do it. There are yeah. only up a couple of numbers here. I'm, I'm defeated though. <laughs> uh, Jim, just start looking up the, uh, yeah, the the dwarf one turn now. You'll be fine. <laughs> got movement seven. Yeah, you got movement it's seven. It's practi yeah. practical already. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> just and you got a frenzy to put that movement Enzo. seven out on the front. Yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? yeah, that Slayer's jump up's not been a use to you today, has it? No. I think he's got enough stand for him to negate that, actually. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, oh, no, he's one short. Right? Yeah, he's one short. You can do it. It can happen. The dream is alive, Jim. You, you need more movement than just one piece as dwarves. <laughs> but, you know, riots happen. Power cuts happen. Covid-induced <laughs> heart attacks happen. There is all sorts that yeah, could still turn this game. Here. Zombie invasions. Yeah, I think uh, table leg. I think uh, PTK might agree with your strategies here. Or, of course, you know, surgeon could just realise that this is essentially a ridiculous game and just decide to do something better with his life. That's. <laughs> Oh dear, this is uh this is <laughs> this is a struggle now for the commentary booth, I guess. <laughs> <laughs>
Let's get the ring. Oh, oh, good. Oh, oh, oh. It's worse than that, he's dead, Jim. No! Apple saves. <laughs> Shit. Dan Bedgore's thinking that was the perfect result. <laughs> Get off my fucking bitch, prick. <laughs> Bloody apples. You could have at least just been a foul four. No, when, when things don't aren't worry. going your way, they continue to not go your way. Yeah, don't don't worry, PTK. There's a lot of Blood Bowl left to play and no Apo to stick now. Blood Bowl that. That's three... Four turns. Yeah, that's a lot. That's plenty of time. Yeah, 25%. That's four more chorfs. Four more chops. You see that? You see that? That palm, that palm slayer right there. You see that piece right there? He can kill four chops in four turns. He's he's done nothing to earn his pay so far, yeah. so it's about time yeah, he did got, something. That's. I mean, for fuck's sake, he's got jump up. He can blitz every turn. <laughs> jump up never fails. Except every time Jim's tried it so far. <laughs> yep. Look, I mean, we're kidding. There is always hope, you know? It's now a <clears throat> nine dwarf versus ten twitch off. That's not so bleak. Yeah. All right, they're stronger, more mobile, and better skilled. But they're not better coached. Anyone anyone can roll a pair of sixes. Yeah, and there's, uh, there's still a couple of stand firm guards, so you still... Dwarves that can still end up being in the way. We we can joke endlessly, but I you know I don't quit. I'll keep trying, and Jimmy will too. Also yeah, got Jimmy, to combine Jimmy. nine <laughs> nine rerolls. Jimmy <laughs> is not one to be known to quit early on a game of Blood Bowl. Yeah, I mean we we haven't discussed that, but if this does go all the way to the end of overtime without any more scores, Jimmy's in a fantastic equity position right now. <laughs> well, and, I mean, and the kick is only up one. <laughs> the animation will take forever though. Right now, if you offered Jimmy kicks with him up one, he would snatch your hand off. Oh, of course, of course. And probably give you one round the back of the bike sheds. That is, he's not in a hurry. He could hope. He doesn't, yeah, absolutely. The last thing he wants to do is score and give these dwarves two back. Yeah, um, just because you shouldn't, not because it would be dangerous. But it also means that if a little bit of hot dies, if you can chip a cup at dwarves more, then it yeah. could be harder to score suddenly. Yeah, That's... I mean, it's like everything, you take it one step at a time. How, how does this turn around? Well, how this turns around is, first of all, you get the numbers back a little more even. You take a killer piece out, or you knock a bull out, and then suddenly it can... all looks very, very different. Like he, like, he might end up setting up so he could, for example, chain push the stand firm in, in front of the ball, or stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. He decided that was a problem. Oh, and, uh, oh, oh, that's, a, that's a number. There we are. We are now back to even numbers. It's 9-9. Nine, nine. Um, but yeah, and he probably... Really done, so it's, it's actually on field reasonably even too. In terms of hey. sort of active and able pieces. I guess he spotted the same that that guard stand firm could have been really annoying next turn. And over on the non-ball side of the pitch, uh, Jimmy can stand up. A dwarf that won't be in much risk and get himself two die on uh, on the stand firm guard that side. Mm. His blitz is more mobile than just the guard CDB that it's marking. Oh, so that's that one die. Uh, that's one die. On the ball. The one die there, he can get right on the ball. I've got gotta five reroll. There, you got to take it. Yeah, you've got to. I mean, it's a non-tackle piece versus blodge, but still, it's you know sixes happen, and if you've got two dice for it by the time you get there, I mean, it's a three plus two plus two plus to get that. But if they, you still got your reroll dry. You get two hits on it, and then who knows what happens? I okay. don't think that was the best turn that the Chaos Dwarves have played so far. As if on cue, my replay froze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing's happening in my client, so either, either Jimmy's just looking at it going, why has he left me that? Yeah, it's right. it sounds like we might have okay, lost so yeah, the... with that two die that I said. He gets the pal, so the, uh, doesn't doesn't chip it, doesn't even stun it, but that's nice. Goes with the blitz. Gets there. For some reason, it wasn't a blitz, though. Is yeah. He coming around with Slayer, he is. Oh, baby. Slayer could earn his entire paycheck today. We lose PTK? I think he's back now. Yeah, I'm back now. 
No, it has to be the runner that's going, doesn't it? The Slayer, it would be ridiculous dodges yep. to get there with any hits left. So oh, yeah, movement seconds. Going. Yeah, the runner can get there Yeah, as the well. runner can get there now. <laughs> two dice. Come on! Is Come this? on! What Come is on! This? No! Of course. just left that way too rowdy. <laughs> and it's a pow! Oh, yes, get there. Gets the reroll! Gets the pow! What Come is on. even happening? Welcome to yes. Boomtown Chaos. Game. And it's and a the armor break. Clearly, Not the I ideal missed the very but hey, big look, it's a huge swing in momentum. Jimmy's got to be thrilled with that. <laughs> I, We're not seeing so him back in this move for another turn at least. <laughs> my replay had frozen, so I don't know how this got set up, but that seems like an absolute fuck up was, by the, by yeah, the that, the, yeah, the foul was crazy with having that guy. Tony could just dodge yeah. over on a 3+. plus. Yeah, leaving the ball on the other side of the field where it wasn't doing sod all rather than closing off that middle area was awful. <laughs> Uh, the over advance forward wasn't great and then the foul i mean like core said if you didn't do it there was a chance of pushing something near the ball but if you did do it and it failed which it did then it left everything wide open i, I didn't like that turn on any level and i think it was rewarded as it should have been with a really tough position for the chaos tools now huge momentum swing yeah no matter what happens with these blocks we're a one and nine away from complete disaster for surgeon and the armor holds up. I mean, right now, I think overtime is looking favorite. And frankly, there's enough dwarves around there that any kind of other fuck up from these Chaos Dwarves, <laughs> yeah. suddenly it is absolutely game on. What the? Can't help I piling on. Why pile on there? You haven't broken armor. It's another piece not on the, not on its feet, but it's guard doing anything useful. Oh, oh he's getting all the pounds, though. But again, that strength five bull can go where the hell it wants. And it did. Straight into a tackle zone on a T plus. Getting its three die on that runner. And now securing a position the ball can retreat to. But mm, can you? You need the other break tackle as well. You need both bulls yeah, back. The other bulls going to have to come over as well. One, two, three. Surely it steps four, behind five, the stun. Okay, this is now this pickup is enormous. Yeah. This could basically decide if we're getting overtime, and he gets it. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, well, you need to go one square more. Oh, and a go for it as well. And oh, why? Why are you doing But why? Where, oh. Why? oh, I don't understand this. From some really solid Chaos Dwarf play, we've suddenly had two awful turns in a row. He's panicking. That's and now even the bull here. dodging is on a two plus fail here. He's in an awful position. Are you yeah. not sure? And if he doesn't what? come, then the Blitzer can get there. Well, he goes with the two plus. And works. Two, three, four, five, six. I can still put an easy tackle zone on this ball, and then I'm a four plus, three plus away from two more die. Yeah. Um, and especially the pylon just leaves it open. Oh, the pylon was awful. And it's a, such a reason why pylon isn't that good a skill. Yeah. Well, that has more to do with the uh, coaching decisions than the skill itself, though. <laughs> But, I guess but if you're not going to use it so often yeah. because you actually need the piece yeah. positionally, then it makes the skill, you know, a dead TV really, really often. I mean, I don't hate it with Claw because Claw Palm is obviously incredibly good by the numbers. It's really good for chipping. One, two, but on a team that just can't afford for one of its few guards to be on its ass, it, there's so many times, the only time I would really use it is at the end of a drive when I'm already mess massive numbers up. And it's to further hurt someone I've already beat. If you're in the midst of trying to win the game, can you really afford that piece on its ass? And I say no. Apparently you could. <laughs> well, yes, I think you're taking the piss. I think you secretly agree with me. <laughs> Except when I ever criticize anything you do. Oh, stop bad. I did agree on at least one. Well, as it stands... I'm just having a um... laugh, Corey, you know it. As it stands, Surgent has no way to score and win this game without at least a GFI, even if it's on a bull. So that's not nothing. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's a dominant position. He allowed it to fall to hell. Yeah. I mean, secretly, I'm pleased, not just for Jimmy, but because we've got a game again when we really shouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, our time is perfect. Absolutely. There were so many ways for this to just be wrapped up by now, even with the, the nicer rolls that Jimmy's had this half. This just shouldn't have been the game it's become. And here comes the Gophrides. No, the little fat dude. Oh, uh, well, he's still got the reroll advantage. 
Oh shit! That oh, could be. Uh... Snake. Now, as we all know, go for it. You know, dwarves have a right to do a few go for it without failing. Yeah, but he failed. He failed his other GFI to hit the ball, as well. That's pretty hard yeah. done right there. Yes, although I would point out he'd made the go for it to put the assist in beforehand, and the dodge. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. But you know, if, if those are the dice that do it, those are the dice you've got to go for. And they, yep. you know, an elf would do that string of dice and not think about it twice. And so should dwarves, because if that's what works, that's what you do. And sometimes it also fails from elves. Yeah. Also, some, some, somebody displayed that recently as well. So as it stands, this uh, this ball carrier needs two GFIs to score totally. Uh, so that's still going to be better than putting it in the bull's hands. He can probably afford the uh, the potato slightly here with some bulls that can get up and put some screening around it. Yeah. It's just a question of the route. What what route does it go? And I think diagonally up through the uh, the skillless dwarf is the way to go. Yeah. Probably yeah, by blitzing so. the runner just to create that again. Mm -hmm. One more step that doesn't mm -hmm. need to go for it. And then you tie up the slayer. You smack the uh, skillless dwarf. You cannot uh, smack the, that one standard up. The God stand oh yeah, route. no, you're right. Okay, well then you might have to leave it a four plus. Yeah, I was or a get bit something around the back side of it. Get a bull around the back side of it. I was personally looking at blitzing that. It'll give you a go for it more, but it will mean you have that whole side for yourself. But yeah. on the other hand, the runner is the dangerous piece, so you might as well see if you can. Hey, he is taking the runner blitz, and that's not oh, working. Oh, and his dice really have collapsed. A building put up by the Kensington and Chelsea to... Council for Paul. Gets it on the second. Taking the reroll because he really needed that space and he really needs that runner not to be mobile. That's not going to be great, is it? No, I, I don't. I mean, the bull can't stop there, can it? Going, are you go for it into? Oh, well, you cannot yeah, really. He's, he's got to be stepping in front of this slayer, doesn't he? Uh, this problem with doing that is, is of course, the don't let to free it up and then everything is open again. The problem here is a four plus from the, the beard. Yeah, but no. So now you need to deal with the bigger one that's. That, yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't love it. No, I'm not. It it makes everything. I'm. It makes everything awkward not having that extra. Um, have the not having a fuck is called. It's called a reroll. Yeah. That is what it is. <laughs> oh. Um, not having the reroll makes this. I'm pretty sure he would like oh, to do a little bit more rest on there. That one card, die is really, really helping with that position because now that uh, oh, card piece can tie up this other dwarf or can reinforce the ball from the other side on one, two, th one, two, three, four, on two go for it. I think I'd be risking that, but then I don't mind a couple of rowdy two pluses if it's going to win me the game. And he does, but he fails the second one. Four plus? Now, there are some options die. here. They're not great options, but Jimmy would certainly One die that can go into another hit, too. You can get um, one, two, three, four. It can be two dice. It's just two go for it. Again, two, two die, two go for it, and then four plus. It's better up, odds than last time. Yeah. And you want yeah, that guard time right. in in the, If you put in the two plus, two plus, then it is four plus for two die. I don't hate that. On the other hand, if you go with the naked four plus, then as Skuro said, even a push gives you other hits with that uh, Slayer. <laughs> Yeah, but that thing. Although the that's going to be a, that's going to be a red dice because of the guard on him. I think the two plus two plus for the two die after a four plus is the way to it go. Also, it also potentially also hey, help you stop the touchdown whatsoever with having guards and firm in, in front of the ball. Yes, I think you're right because then even as you said, if it isn't the power from the ball, then you're looking yeah, at a, a, two, a three plus dodge off. Yeah. He gets GFIs there with the two plus, in. two plus. Here comes the four plus. Here comes the four plus, four plus four makes plus. it without the reroll. No. Doesn't get the power, has to reroll it, rerolls it. Doesn't get the. Oh, no, because he gets oh, the rest of it. He got him that time, though. Oh, but that ball is. 
but again, it's... Oh, it's a dirty player, not even wrestle. So, yeah, the both down does take the ball down, and now it's bull. If we're going to see a score, it's going to come from a bull. It's going to need to be bull-tastic. <laughs> and it's... Oh, there's going to have to be a handoff to the bull because neither can pick it up and get there. The strength five's out of range. <coughs> the strength four's in range, but not if it dodges back and picks up. Yeah. So something has to give it to that strength four, which also has to be free of tackle zones. Now, this I think Jimmy's just doing be... that math and wondering if he's going to push this with another go for it in front of that bull. Considering he's this still got other be... players to move, uh, <laughs> I would... No, it got I'd a movement, more. He can just move that. Yeah, yeah, it's not even a go. Over. He absolutely should, then. And he does. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Although, has he given him... No, he hasn't really given because him Because that chance, high, high agility Hobgoblin is, is going to get yeah, to the can. ball unless he's very careful. But that is a change. Sorry, the, uh, oh. the move seven. <clears throat> yes, the AG4 Hobgoblin has clearly got to do the handing off. But that is a but chain on, though. Now, probably yeah. now it's going to have to be a throw into the end zone. No, he can, can scatter, yeah, no he can scatter this ball up. It just said guard up. You blitz from the front, pushing your... Break tackle, tackle back, one square. You might even just push it free of the ball, um, and then you can block the two other players with the with the two standing pieces, so you can yep. get a free free shot at it. Yeah, there's lots of options here. Um, I'm, I I will probably do that first. I don't hate that. Um, uh, why scatter the ball when it. you you know you can potentially. The other option I'll, is you can push your own ball bull back onto it, which mm. gets it clear of tackle zones. But, but if you just hit the Slayer first and see how that goes, if that's a knockdown, you can uh, knock down the runner probably as well. And then you can just chain you free. The oh, other you, advantage with that plan is even if you don't score, that's two AVH you're getting hits on. Yeah. I, I will definitely. Well, course, I was, with the claw, most things are AV7 on this pitch well, anyway. He's doing a... He's doing a and we will see it. Pile on now as well, I would imagine. Of course. <laughs> it's been pretty shared. Hey, look, uh, <laughs> all things considered, though, at the start of this half, Jim would have uh, probably no. been okay with the dice remaining to <clears throat> lose this game. I mean, it's Absolutely. a bit interesting to see if he goes for if, what option uh, he is going for. He yeah, is I'm going for that way. Which Many means ways to do this. That's, which means you need to uh, push yourself back into the ball now instead. For once, you can't pretend you've had a good idea when actually you've checked three things on Samba. These mm. are situations that aren't just about what the dice numbers are. It's about what's the plan, what's the strategy. Do we leave the ball? Do we move the ball? We need to leave. Uh, we need to move it now because you need up in that square so you don't have assist on you for the handoff. Yeah, here comes the chain. Yeah, so you need to do it into the into the ball and hope for good scatter, surely. Yeah, that's what he's going for. That's what he's doing. Oh, and it's a perfect scatter. Yeah, so now it's going to be very, very happy though. with that. Uh, the good side for Jimmy, of course, is that the AG can't get there. Yeah, we go for it. Yes, but isn't it just he is going for that free play? Oh, he, no, yeah. no, he oh, is. He's he going with the AG the... piece. All right, now, now it's on, baby. Oh, sure oh, hands. Sure. Okay, right, four plus, two plus. It oh, gets four the plus, two plus. <laughs> and then three two pluses with sure feet on it. The four plus works. Don't forget the uh, the extra dodge here, too. Yeah, it's a two, the two plus. Yeah, it's a two plus because of the break tackle. And then oh, and it's oh, he doesn't oh, make it, though. We have oh, overtime in a Jim. game that looks... Dead. No, no, it's not over yet, yet. It's not that's over. A scoring yet. Fred. Got oh yeah, Jimmy did put a cheeky little threat. scoring threat, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he did. He very he has a very good shot here of a miracle pass. Yeah, the runner is standing if you can get that, <laughs> very, if you can get that pulled down. Slight worry is the slayer doesn't have an assist on the strength five until yeah. we do the so if we do, do you... this blitz and it works, then we've got the assist. Blitz works. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. So now this is a one die no, without the oh. 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 Oh, he gets away with it, though. It's fine. It's fine. It, it's just three plus now. Yeah. And makes it. Makes it. Gets makes the pick, pick up. up with the sure hands. Oh, sure hands is a skill there. You're, 
You're re-rolling everything right magic, now. Magic Ooh. throw just needs this to yeah. get into a dwarf hand. Thank you. Jimmy has won a game. He had One no more right GFI to even still to make be it in. Easier? It, oh, two GFIs yeah, that's, to make it easier. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yep. not wrong. Oh. That's wrong. Oh, sorry. I don't like that. No. Uh, so we do just have a pass it. I don't well, know if that range failed at perfect Nuffle moments. When it looked like yeah. it was going to happen, it well, didn't happen because Nuffle's got a sense of humor. <laughs> it's like Nuffle I hates don't happy. know a to three up there. And, the uh, normal, normally, there's no reason to go for it twice to get it one less. That's like the, the like the just thinking rule is two go for it to make it one less is not worth it, especially with the risk of killing your own players on top. Because the, you gain so little percentage that it's not. Though it's door fall as well. The ch the dwarves have yeah dwarves have won the toss. They have a real shot here. And they their got? KO recovered. Six, nine, ten players. Yeah, their KO came back. Yeah, ten players. To so they're do at this. ten. Yeah, exactly. It's, you gain a little bit with using the reroll, but it's so little. Um, now, in terms um, of Kekwiti, Kekwiti fans I know are going to be uh, having a good look at this. It's one re-roll each, but Jimmy has the fame. He's probably yeah. hoping to pick another one up. It's 10 dwarves with the ball in hand against 11 chorfs with no ball, but five CDBs and two nasty bulls and their agility up. Exactly. And gobs still on the field. So they are incredibly poised this game is. Uh, cheers, girl. Yeah, I was gonna. Say, I was just about to point out that whoever called out that early GG, folks, this is why you always want to get your GG equity <laughs> in right at the right moment and start of the second half. That was just perfection, yeah. just really brilliant coaching by Jim there. Not only dropping the early GG, also hopping into chat on turn eleven. He really played this one out. Like this is a, yeah, that's, this that's is just every psychological, psychological card victory. he had. Yeah. He used his whole hand worth of psychology there. And uh, we're, we're in a really interesting situation where if you look back, it was pretty much right after the booth hop that we did see Chirgent's uh, coaching fall to uh, to rack and ruin. Went to hell yeah, in a handcart. He... And the momentum one really turn, swung. But that it's still... one turn just opened him up and then the panic set in and he didn't make some good decisions. Still had a realistic yeah, but... shot of winning it there after all that. The turn but... after that was awful as well. I mean, yeah, we saw two really terrible turns in a row. I will be right back. I'm going to run to the bathroom before this really gets going. Roller Drop is back. Wait an extra reroll. So he gets it back from trying. Absolutely. I did say the fame might be a factor, and it, it wasn't. <laughs> Whoa, no. Fix goal. I know nothing. All anyone's going to remember from the end of this game is that I was right and that it wasn't over. It should have been. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If this game is a loss, Sheerton is going to have to look back and say, how did I let that go? I had it done, and I let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah, but not in the good way. Oh. I can't criticize other people for singing on stream. I am known to occasionally drop into song myself. Right now, Jimmy's stabilizing his position, making sure he's got that nice, solid guard wall with some outriders to make sure the bulls don't get around the flanks. Big question here is whether the ball is going to come forward this turn if Jimmy thinks it's safe from those bulls coming around the edges. Can he advance the ball up into the pack where it really wants to be? Uh, I think yes. I think depending how he uh, positions the runner and the slayer, if he's going to put them slightly at risk, he can certainly tie up a flank and get something forward. If not, he might have to... The problem with hanging back, of course, is if the bulls get between the ball and the pack, then it might be even tougher to get it into a position where it's safe next turn. Yep, so he is moving that ball forwards. Oh, I yeah. think that's a... Ooh, now we're going to have to get some people around. Where's the runner? So the runner needs to come in now as well, right? Yeah, the runner has to close the other back door because the bulls can get around the side the Slayer went to. That looks fairly safe. I mean, with a strength five block tackle bull, it, it, they can still get in if it really wants to. 
and it's two uh, dice. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's got quite the pace to get around there. Two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six. six seven, Not when you eight, don't nine. have any rerolls. No, it would have to do a it would have to do a dodge that didn't need break tackle before the one that did. So yeah. I'm not sure he's going to take that chance. I think he's just going to try and get something out with Claw and uh, press that numbers advantage even more. Of course, 11-10 doesn't feel like much of an advantage, but 11-9 is going to start to feel really big, particularly to Jimmy. Just having so overtime Jimmy and having the ball in hand is going to feel pretty mighty to Jim after all that. Oh, Jimmy's going to be touching himself in a, in a nasty way right now that he's even still in this game. Oh, yeah, we might be getting a guest commentary by my dogs while my fiance makes breakfast. You can fully imagine that supplies of hand cream and rubber gloves uh, might be fitting short in Jimmy's area. <laughs> <laughs> Holds up again. They've been doing all right. I've seen uh, elves go south faster. We've all seen elves go south fast, usually with the ball in their hands and a grin on their faces. Also that Hello, way. Badger. And interesting, we're seeing... Uh, yeah, the ball's coming to monster that runner. Pressure the back of this cage. If yeah. you can slip in behind Jimmy and really fuck him, then he will. Yeah, I don't mind it again. It's, it needs to think about the backside, and it's fast enough to get back to the right if he needs it. Not sure it's just a little bit of open space here on the behind. right, though. I think it's most but it's dwarfs are so slow, so he's not getting far. Yeah, that's true. But we're seeing a, a you know very much a change of tactics here from Sierdent. He's uh, he's stealing Jimmy's idea of just elf wall and make the dwarves come to him. Mm. And Jim is getting some nicer, nice stuns at the moment. It's a golden goal shifty, so first person to score wins it. If it's tied at the end of this, it goes to kicks, which is basically just a uh, <laughs> lot of animations to see four plus rolls uh, with re rolls. Uh, no, it's in. just a d6. It's a so d6. Sorry, d6, 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 d6 plus re rolls. You, you, yeah. You're in next edition already. Yeah, with, my uh, bad. With, yeah. 35 minutes of animations to show us what that meant. Yeah, at least they used, uh, we had nine rerolls. I'm not sure I was sit looking at a kick, but the first nine kicks just going. That'd been crazy. <laughs> Two crazy days fun. later. Who doesn't love seeing dwarves kick a ball for no reason whatsoever? I like seeing the tree does do it though. That looks like hilarious. Has Jim left himself seen a tree GFI kick? to protect this ball right now from the, from the, uh, Oh no, he hasn't. Mm -hmm. I think through? he's going to have a little, um, little. Oh no, he's already used his blitz. Yeah, he's blitz. He might already. be having a he go has, at that He's ball. left himself a GFI here. Yeah, he surely, and you probably need to put tackle on that bull, aren't you? Just in case. To put a Hannibal Lecter-style cage on that bull. Yeah, but that's and I'm ideally not sure. a headstone over its grave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure what you can afford to right now. He's spre spreading himself a bit, then? Yeah, I see why. He's trying to seize some space and try and get that ball forward. He does have to score, and of course, if he scores, you know, it's about works. keeping dwarves alive at the same time, ready to uh, to mess up whoever his next opponent is. Oh, that's you, isn't it, Cor? <laughs> yeah, I did look at the the dwarf is, uh, all of them is back. It's a bit sad. All that injuries. You could have done like me where all the injuries was uh, pipes. With my two nickling and a mi miss mix game and a minus AV. I'm not sure anyone other than you cares that some of your elves got killed. They didn't get killed. If they did just been get killed, they got even worse. It's just memeing just giving them nicklings. If he does this, do we just see him dodge out and hits the trolls there? Yes, I, th I think absolutely he's going to try and put some again, some pressure on the back side of this cage and a wall up in front of it. I hope he can squeeze the cage to the point where it's really got nowhere to go and just has to fight its way in place. Yeah, or has to place up some Chaos Dwarves and give him the advantage in the, uh, in the hitting. Uh, 
getting the yeah get the bull over he does, does also need to be careful he did manage last time is, is really stabilizing his position with lots of stand firm around this cage it's very hard to push away into it nope we're going for the claw head he's thrilled to see that the attack there was on his his least good dwarf and he survives yep <laughs> well, um, the the double pushes there might have been uh, might have been a little bit of a help to surgeon who probably couldn't have resisted piling on, and he kind of needs the players right now to stay in front of him. What are we? Why are we not following? Oh, now the runner can at least move into a better spot than if you're following up. Yeah, exactly, Artemis. I don't. I think he wants that bull ideally, not having to dodge out. But yeah, but he's, he's going to. <laughs> but it's going to be marked by something anyway, just from a world well, square now. You'd have yeah, hoped Jimmy absolutely. would drop that <laughs> that useless dwarf on it, the one that just didn't get banged out with the uh, with the blitz. Oh, oh, the runner, which is a bit yeah, out of position. Also, as useless runner, but at least that runner has move six, which means it can support the move seven ball carrier if there is a chance yeah. to break down one side. I would drop the uh, yeah the point. Yeah, that has tackle as well, so. Mm -hmm. Means the dodge out is less good. Dodge out is a naked two instead of a rerolled two. Mm. But that's the thing, he's going to be marked anyway, so why are you letting the runner move? That's just pointless. And as you now say, you're just freeing up the runner, you've got a one in 36 to get off it if you want to, and now it's a one in six. And so again, I do think, I, do think now, I would have based that runner. Yeah, there's no reason not to because you're getting based anyway. Yeah, you either put a second dwarf in to put tackle on it, or you keep that runner, which, as I said, I think is slightly more useful than that dwarf right now. Oh, oh kick equities down. Yeah, well. Yeah, you had to reroll that because, of course, you'd uh, removed the front of your cage to put that assist in. But did you have to blitz with him? No. No, I didn't like it, but it. Once you did it that way, you had to reroll it. The problem was anyway, because of the bull standing behind you, you couldn't really move anyone from the cage. But we had enough pieces without that, I think. Yeah. This is it's getting interesting. The advantage of going there, of course, is that he's now able to base this hobgob, and you, you kind of don't mind hobgobs hitting you. Particularly a stand firm piece. A fail there is awful for the Hobgoblin. It means that yeah. Chaos Dwarf blocker, if it stands up, is, is in a surfable position. So there's a lot of problems here for the Chaos Dwarfs to think about. I know how I'd solve them. Let's see how he does. And because that's a stand firm blitzer, even if you don't, even if you do knock it over, there's still a good chance of getting surfed back because you're not stand firm. Yeah, first solution is make sure that that's not just a free run if you fail. Yep. You've got the hot dirty player. You to take the blitzer out with either your other dwarf or with a bull, and then dodge off the downed dwarf at the very end of the turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's definitely on the menu. The question is, like, is he going to claw some, claw, you know, like this runner back here completely irrelevantly, or is he going to bring him back in and uh, hit someone of value? You would hope the latter, what? unless you're Interestingly, the Claw Pommer again only move three. So if it is going to get relevant yeah. to this drive, it has to centralize more. It cannot attack either the Blitzer or the Runner. If it does so, I think it's a mistake. You might try and Blitz through the Runner, but that doesn't do enough, I don't think. He might even leave the blitz for the uh, the bull at the very end of the turn and get the strength five more involved. Okay, yeah, so none the of us did centralized, which is what it had to do, I think. Can he resist the blitz from that downed claw mighty blow? Which I don't ah, love. He needs to blitz with that strength five and get it back into the middle. Because yeah. it's that's what I'd be doing. I mean, if I, I might even be dropping it around the runner and back yeah. into my side of the field. Yeah, something. 
Alors préfère se battre entouré. Or even just securing that right hand flank if you're looking from behind the Chaos Dwarves. Can he needs to go left? He needs to go back left. Yeah, yeah because otherwise, so. that, that's he, otherwise that's just a three plus hand off, and then he's off. Surely, he, no, he's with, not. Oh, with bulls, he, yeah, he can't couldn't resist that claw, mighty blow here. But he can. He can be out of range of everyone. Yeah, but he couldn't resist it. Oh, I think he's. Is he going to just do a hit, or is he going to do that two plus dodge off to try surely, and get mobility? Yeah. Oh, the just the hit. Okay, oh, that, that's, that's he's got, Yeah, he's got to. We I mean, still got to get through. He's got to get that ball over to him, which isn't a given. I'm tempted but... to say what we've seen from the Chaos Dwarves here since that. I think tilt in the halfway through the second half. I think we've seen. But is the Baron's response is I'll just hit stuff and that will work. Well, that's not a great screen. <laughs> yeah. No, now the case against the the handoff to the runner and potato is that he also has two GFIs to score. Uh, yeah, but, he's but you can do it. He's got to do it. But I think you should. I've, you can even get two two dice on that pool and then just walk it over with tackle. So the bull is not a threat. And do you have enough so you can mark those things as well? That's only one of the blitzers that can get to the sideline. I think you need to... I, I cannot see not taking this. Surely he's you're taking this it. chance. Yeah, he's going, he's, he's going for it. He is. This is kind of an all, all eggs in one basket maneuver, though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, if, this, if the handoff doesn't work, it's it's not great. It doesn't get him down here, it's not great either. No, he does. He's done. And then you can uh, chip, put it in, and then up forward, giving assist, and making it harder for those dwarves to go anywhere. If he has to move right, he has to move, yeah. That's get that guard stand firm into the. Yeah. Well, he, that's yeah, horrible. He can't, he can't stay there. And, yeah, that's the best square for it to be. Why are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Still, though, this is not a given for Jim here. Three plus, and he's got to make some GFIs. Three plus works. Yep. One reroll left in this game, so this is kind of all or nothing now. He's got to go all the way up to the sideline here. Ball should be exactly where this runner wants to go now. Not just doing a pointless hit on an absolutely meaningless. Yeah, game. that was abs that was crazy. It was awful. Just, there's no defending it. It's awful. But unfortunately, since you know the first half, I thought the Chaos Dwarves coached really well. I thought the second half they started pretty well, and then right after the good game and Jimmy popping in the commentary box, the magic worked. The Chaos Dwarves started playing. It is like he he ball. does have four plus two plus two plus to at least tag the runner by the sideline. At least, yeah, that but that's yeah. An awful position to find yourself in from where he was. I'm not saying I was calling that Pando a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as that hit, I was. I was just. Bold bitch. I was, it was just. Awful. The only question is he needs game. to make. Actually, what Jim needs to make sure is you cannot chain push that wolf in. No, that doesn't really matter because it dodges. Can you free it up? I think I think I would I think I would actually dodge the Slayer out and try and make some GFIs to get in the way of the only guy who can affect this play. Yeah, can you get that around? One, two, One, two three, three, four, three, five, five, six, seven. Five yeah. GFI. yeah, you can. Yeah. Absolutely. You can be exactly four plus, where you would want to be, but it does take a four plus, two plus, two plus. <laughs> you still All right, now, now you definitely do it. There's nothing <laughs> to stop you from losing the game. The go for it's oh, done. You don't even off. need any more rerolls. You've just got to stop this one. Oh, but don't don't take the hit because <laughs> if that hit, don't, they don't hit, hit with the slayer. Don't hit with the slayer because yeah, that pushes him in range. Ah, uh, that's better. That's fine. That's fine. You can let that fail happen. Yep. Um, because if that dwarf tags you, you only need a, a you only need to move it. You only need a three plus on two. And he can. But the, the thing is, of course, now with that gone, he can easily. Uh, Try to blitz it free, so he doesn't have to dodge out. So he can blitz one of them, and then he can block the other one. I, I, I still don't care. It's still then two gophers to tag me with a single piece. Yeah, I know it's terrible, but 
Jim has a re-roll to push him off there. That'll add a GFI, though. Yeah, yeah but that's... Yeah, you will take that 3+, plus, but... Yeah, of course, plus, of course. Yeah, 3 plus, 2 plus is still a Perf lovely bro. position to be bang, in. Bang, bang. Amazing, this amazing how fail. it worked out I'm that the one brain. guy in range Perf, isn't a stand Perf. firmer, too. Like, just... Yep. Completely needed to close off his back end with a stand firm there. Yeah, well, and his Chaos Dwarf defense has not yeah. been good. And that's no, that's heavily automated. Like yeah. And then I think I think the the last bit of the second half really might have might have broken Surgeon a little bit there uh, for the rest of the well, game. Well, I did I did and, uh, I did start that sentence. I'm not sure if I finished right, it. That I thought in the second half, half in the second half of the second half, we were seeing someone that was a bit on tilt oh, that wasn't playing the quality we've seen him play against me mm. and against Jimmy earlier in this game. And I'm not sure he's sorted that out. I'm not sure he's got his head straight still. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you on that one. I mean, I think Surgeon's a very, very good coach. I've been really impressed with a lot of what I've seen him do. He but the second, second half, second half of the second half of this defense has He doesn't been need to chain it all. He just needs to block two. He needs to get pushes on one and get yellow on another one. Yeah. Yeah. This one's only a push. That's fine. And that's moment three. That's no reason. This is the one where he needs to. <laughs> oh, and piling on, of course, which means it's now another dwarf needs to go in to give him the two die. Yeah, what perfect the time hell to pile was on. Okay. I, guess, I, guess well, I mean, I guess, I guess he's got it. I guess he's got it. No problem. So. But, but surely, yeah, but you rather have the oh, it's just oh, oh baby. I guess if you've got piling on, you and there it is. Up. Fails the four there plus. There's the reroll. But he's not. He's and not even. And it's a gym win. Glorious. He won this <laughs> Also, let's not forget the fact he's not moving anybody off the tackle pieces. So even mm -hmm. if he gets out there and Jimmy knocks himself down, yeah. there's no yeah. tackle. Like, there's no more really. support. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, the the no, no, victorious again. Jimmy, oh, fantastic. No, Proven why you should never concede a game of Blood Bowl when it looks like it's over. And I will defend. <laughs> Glorious. And <laughs> Glorious, of course, excitingly no, for the in, lovers of ridiculous I'm records, victorious that and puts I will two defend fumble I major will. winners against each defend other in a Chalice semi-final. Guaranteeing a fumble major in, winner no. will once again so play to be the first the person end, to earn a Chalice end. and a fumble major title. One of them no, will be in the final game, in. one of them will Until have that shot, victorious. which I screwed and up. I will defend. I yeah, the early GG course. equity winning it once again. Hype train going, folks. Hop aboard. <laughs> Glorious. Glorious. Oh, God. No, I won't give thank, you, thank you very much, Jordan. And, uh, thank you and very I will much, defend. Frosty. I will defend. Oh, dear me. What a <laughs> game of Blood Bowl. Oh, wow. Thank yeah. you very much as well. <laughs> oh, this is why anyone watching that quits exactly their game or thinks, oh, my first half was awful, this is over. This is why it is never, ever over. Absolutely. And <laughs> that Dr. one wasn't Bosco, just freak you luck much. either. You know, he let you back in that game, Jim. How did you feel about his second half there? Yeah. Um, what a fucking good, game. It? I the gave up on turn 11. <laughs> paid off. And then, uh, I said his yeah, second half, He gave yours. up on turn 12. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm oh, literally giving up. No, I'm giving up. All sense of security. I'm victorious. Early GG. And I will defend. Yeah, the early GG wasn't any defend. kind of gamesmanship. It was just, I just thought it was over, you know. I fucking thought it was over. That was it. That was... It should have been. I, I, I <laughs> yeah. think it should have been. I think there were so many ways of just making sure that didn't happen. I don't Big know, I should cheer because Jimmy won, or if I should cry because <laughs> now Jimmy will it didn't improve afterwards. have to play another <laughs> game. Really strong coaching, which I'd seen throughout. Suddenly his coaching was frankly quite bangery. A lot of overhitting, a lot of claw plumbing. On to the semi-finals, glorious. Poor, poor positions, and some very poor... Thank you. Like, how, how hard can it be to... Bull, just deciding he was going to hit a relevant piece of rather do anything to help. What the yeah. hell was going on? Yeah, well, it was you bizarre, can, wasn't awesome, it? Awesome, Jimmy Glorious. Especially Blood Bowl 2, you can click on that runner, and then you can click on your players and see it can go where you cannot catch it. It's yeah. not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. Glorious. Thank you very much, no, everybody, by the way. This is incredible. Thank you very much, Ducky, Lamati, Skurl, Hold the Key, Zoom, I will Tony. Defend. Oh. What's been really interesting is that, the, particularly in the later half of this challenge, we've had some cracking games going on. Some really, really good Blood Bowl to watch. 
I hope everyone's been enjoying it. I've been loving watching them. I'd have been sat there like you, just wondering what was happening if I didn't get to talk about them. <laughs> oh. so it's been fabulous. <laughs> Absolutely glorious. And um, no, yeah, the I foul. Won't give in. Until I'm victorious. Yeah, I could have chained my stamp phone with both of them. That's why yeah, I did the foul. I will defend. Yeah, but it's still better than getting. Glorious it's be day. better than leaving three pluses on to get sacked. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it, that really fucked him, didn't it? Because yeah, that, that, that yes. goblin was stopping the two D on the ball, and I it got sent off as well. So it still got the. Yeah. Not only did it get two D on the ball, leave. Not only did it leave two D on the ball instead of chaining a stamp firm on into contact, it also got it sent off. It really. Really Until fun. I'm victorious, totally changed and the momentum. I will defend. And, I mean, leaving the, the strength of the ball on the wrong side of the pitch before he did that was just awful. Mm. Glorious. Thank so you many decisions much. I thought were just were going no, downhill I won't and then give further in. downhill. I think it's Until a typical I'm example victorious. of regretting your last turn. And, and I will defend. Oh, wow. I will defend. There's <laughs> a tenor there. Thank you very much, uh, Table Leg. And uh, thank you very much, Lonsky. Thank you very much, Odon. Uh, thank you very much, Odon. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't think Jim listens uh, when we're <laughs> commentating. I think that would be just weird to have someone in your ear. Yeah. No, I take off my. Uh, I take. I, well, I, I don't put on my headphones rather than take them off. I don't put on my headphones until you know. Yeah. Until Show turn eleven when I gave up. <laughs> Yeah, and then doesn't I doesn't need me to tell him when to early GG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I'll watch the VOD later, to be honest. Thank you very much, Table Leg. Like, absolutely Jim, glorious. How much of your win to you ascribed to the on-stream coaching <laughs> oh, by BB Leggins, PTK, and PC? <laughs> oh, wow, it's snubbing Skuro there. <laughs> the winner three and winner five. <laughs> That's just Whoa. as that's just wow. as uh, that's just as worthy as major wins and stuff. So it's a bit of a snub for old Skuro there. <laughs> I mean, I, I was just frankly quite impressed that Skuro could work out which colour was which during this game, and he, he didn't <laughs> didn't ever think that uh, yeah that the wrong team was active. <laughs> hey, I'm pretty. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at my blood bowl analysis. I believe I called Jim's entire first half woes. Before anyone blues, else. <laughs> I knew as soon as that short kick blitz happened, it would be trouble for Jim. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, if I look at my passes, zero out of four. <laughs> GFIs, 16 out of 21. Yeah, uh, one of those was like a six plus boomer pass, then, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah, true. that's true. Also, the loaner work. The loaner work. Yeah. The boomer yeah. Pass. yeah. So, two, <laughs> your passes was four. Was what four, four pluses and uh, six pluses? Yeah, <laughs> four yeah. Of them. yeah. To be fair, but it's, it's just funny getting four pass attempts as dwarves, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. But unfortunately, Boomer team. does count as passing, even though he really isn't. Yeah. No. Oh well. But no, it was. I mean, what was great about the end of the second half was that, you know both you looked like you had the game won, reasonably easy chances, and then they both failed taking this to an overtime that was enthralling and brilliant to watch. Um, and I thought you played it a lot better. I mean, I thought Surgeon coached really well in the first half. There was some really good Chaos Dwarf play there. Um, but I thought when things started to go wrong, he over-relied on piling on and on his claws to get it done. And not on good, solid positional play and controlling the field, which no matter how, bad, how good at banging you are, that's how you win games. And look yep. at this, a perfectly healthy Dwarf team coming off of a short uh battle a th yeah. you know a three a three half battle uh going in to face some scrub in the semi-finals <laughs> should be a wild one well i mean it, yeah. all right that definitely Cole's didn't get half that definitely didn't get healthy <laughs> Cole, Cole's not a bad not a bad coach but he does only have half an elf team and last time he had half an elf team you got it to the semi-finals didn't you call that was order got lost to the second show in the quarters okay. i should have won but it does mean a huge pile of inducements coming your way. Um, nah, it's only 180. Interesting game. So, so what, less than 180. Got one. He's got he's got one player and then a and then a team around him, right? Is that is that what we're looking at for? His oh yeah, I'll show, I'll show, but I need to end the video for YouTube soon, don't I? But yeah, uh, yeah, up against K Fog with his with his uh, horrible, disgusting wood elf player. And... Despicable <laughs> natural one turn ought to be a what. Shot. <laughs> and a little bit of a team, <laughs> but mostly that really one player. Nice, I got a really nice answer. answer. No, I, I got two nice players. players. I've got yeah. a team. A team three, three, three and a few other answers. And I will defend. I will defend. 1780, oh god. 
Now, if I was yeah, Jim, uh, I'd I've be got a death roller so that I wasn't facing a wizard. Yes. Then he's not. He's not. But that I'm, death roller is staying, isn't it, Jimmy? Yes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not. He's not facing a wizard. I've got seventy. I got a loner. I'm eighteen oh, fifty. Yes. Oh. oh. I need yeah, to cut then... the tree. I need to cut the tree if I want to get rid of uh, get a wizard. I'm sure you will. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm still not tree. sure I'd bring a death roller to an elf match. But no, I mean, I, you know, I shouldn't, right? Yeah, that's Jimmy's I, choice. I shouldn't bring um, it, yeah? If it was up to me, I'd drop it. But seeing as, like, you know, the death roller was because of chat donations yes. and stuff, yes. I yeah. can't no, really I ditch it. <laughs> so I, I know, like I know it's, it's your, your I ham will hamstrung I will by your I will legions of fans, aren't you? Yeah, last, exactly. last time uh, that death roller played uh, Armor 7, it did kill two. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Let's just. Wow, thank I you. Uh, this ain't no hype but... train, it's a hype roller, baby. <laughs> hype roller. Well, thank you very much for all the donations and gift subs and everything. Everybody, thank you so much. Absolutely amazing. Um, Absolute pleasure. And yeah, thank I wouldn't you. have been anywhere else. <laughs> thank you very much, PC, PTK, and of course, Skuro. Um, absolutely glorious. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. Stay fantastic.